the white Steam Deck just arrived. And if you're wondering if it has any new features, it has one really good one. Besides being in camo mode for the winter, the white Steam Deck features matte triggers, matte screen, matte sticks, and a full white matte shell. For the exclusive feature, you can see here, there's a level of snow resistance that the white model has that I don't think the black one can match. Other than that, this is a, an exact copy of the one terabyte model that Valve's been selling for the last few months. So if we're not getting any performance gains, then why go for the white one? Plain and simple, it just looks way better than the black. It's got a low contrast look that makes it stand out even amongst its competitors. And I've personally fallen in love with the new aesthetic. If you're new to the Steam Deck like I am, then there's a few things I want to cover. We're going to compare it to the Nintendo Switch as well as the Logitech G Cloud, which is a streaming device. The Steam Deck is the largest and most comfortable to hold out of the three, given to its nice, thick console quality grips. This thing really feels like an Xbox controller in your hand. You can see we have large full-size thumbsticks, bigger triggers than the Logitech here. While the weight is rated higher by about 200 grams, because you have that more comfortable grip, it's really hard to tell. I wish Valve would sell the Steam Deck in store because just picking it up for the first time, it's much lighter than you expect it to be. We'll compare it to the Switch in a minute, but I did want to just finish with the Logitech screen and streaming versus local play. Steam Deck has an HDR OLED, which you can show here. You can see the details in the sun, whereas the PlayStation 5 feed seems a little flat in comparison. When playing, we're going to start with the Logitech, so just kind of getting a feel for how Spider-Man moves and how the stream is. The PlayStation Portal is identical to the Logitech in streaming, so a PlayStation Portal will have a similar experience. The PlayStation 5 is giving us a nice, consistent stream, good 60 frames per second. We have ray trace reflections, nice in-hand feel, Spider-Man moves as you expect him to, and overall, great experience for a third-person action game. Jumping over to the Steam Deck, the settings have been brought way down compared to the PlayStation 5. You can see we lose all those nice reflections but we do gain HDR and we do get some of that input leg back. So Spider-Man feels more springy, he feels more light. But in a third person action game, I will say it's kind of a toss up between the, the clarity of the PS5 stream versus the Steam Deck local play. It's kind of a tough call because these types of games are pretty forgiving with this type of thing. You can see here with our slow-mo capture, there isn't a huge difference in how Spider-Man reacts. First person shooters on the other hand are a completely different story. Killzone Shadowfall here is basically unplayable. You can see with the input leg. It, the precision needed for these types of games do not lend themselves well to streaming. And this is where the Steam Deck is gonna really shine. As we jump over to Halo 1, you can see the input leg is non-existent. This is running locally. So we have console quality controls zero issues getting headshots, zero issues with aiming. Feels fantastic, feels like I'm on an Xbox. The full-size thumbsticks feel great. All the controls are super responsive. When I say console quality, this basically feels like an Xbox controller. I would say the D-pad on the Steam Deck is much better than the Xbox's D-pad, but otherwise the buttons are a dead ringer for each other. Jumping over to the Switch, I didn't compare it to the standard Joy-Cons because those are way too cramped and they're not really a competition. Instead, we're going to compare it to the Hori Joy-Cons. These have full-size thumbsticks, better buttons, and just overall more comfortable than the standard Switch. If you like first-person shooters on the go, I highly recommend these Hori pads as they make it way more comfortable and way more accurate with those full-size sticks. That being said, you can see the Steam Deck is still much thicker. It's not much heavier, but it's a lot thicker thanks to those sticks going up way higher. The screen on the Steam Deck is a larger, brighter, HDR version of what's on the Switch. So between the two, not much competition, Steam Deck has a better screen. Here we can actually see the size difference. The entire Switch fits inside of just the bezel of the Steam Deck screen. The Switch with its break apart design makes it way easier to travel with. It's much easier to take on a plane. You can throw those Joy-Cons in a pocket, put the Switch in a different pocket. The Steam Deck doesn't have that. What you get in return is much more performance on the Steam Deck. It's so fast you can even run Switch games on it. And then you get other perks like a full web browser. You can easily mod games on it and just other things in the Linux desktop. I'll cover a few things that I wish I knew getting into the Steam Deck. The first is 
In order to scroll on the left trackpad, you've got to go in a circular motion. The right trackpad is your traditional trackpad, which you're used to on a laptop. Definitely get the Edge browser. That's what I'm using here. It has touch controls. It's the only one that does. And unless you're planning to do emulation or mod some games, I would pretty much stay away from the Linux desktop as it's really flaky. There's a lot of times I've gotten stuck in certain full screen applications with no way to escape. And I've had to hard shut down the Steam Deck just by holding the power button. A couple shortcuts worth noting. One is, is if you hold the Steam button and press X, this will bring up the on-screen keyboard. This keyboard's pretty decent. It's not the greatest, but it does let you use the touch pads as thumbs. And when you kind of get used to it, it's not too bad to type with. Of course, you can use the touch screen, but don't expect like an iPhone level quality here. Um, it doesn't have the same predictive text or correction that iPhones have. Another shortcut worth noting is holding down the three dot button and pushing up on the left joystick raises and lowers the brightness. This is really handy as I don't keep auto brightness on. I find it very unpredictable. So this is how I adjust brightness in my usage. Gaming performance is as good as everyone says it is. Um, I'll let other people kind of speak on that. But I would say if you do get the chance to pick up a Steam Deck, white or black, I think it's a good buy. I'm loving the white. I like the finish. I think it modernized the system, so I highly recommend the white. It is a little bit pricier, but you get something that is a little bit harder to come by. We will have a comparison between the etched glass with a glossy screen protector versus etched glass with a second etched glass screen protector on top. I'm curious myself because I don't like keeping the screens naked on these devices. I tend to throw them in a bag and that type of thing. So look forward to that video here. That being said, thanks for watching. Please like and share if you like the video. Um, please subscribe. It really helps us out. It helps our channel grow. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.